Today I'm telling you guys everything you need to know about trout fishing in the urban ponds here in Arizona. We're also going to be getting out on the water ourselves and catching some of these fish using some of the methods we discussed in this video. These ponds usually start getting stocked from December all the way to the end of February. There is a ton of ponds spread out all over the Phoenix area and the surrounding areas. You guys can track these ponds on the Arizona Department of Fishing Game website where they actually have a section where you can see the stocking schedule. They give you the week of when these ponds are going to be stocked. However, the stock itself can take place any time in that week. They're usually filled by Friday. The ponds are all filled with about the same amount of fish. However, the bigger ponds do get slightly more. These fish can range from as little as 10 inches to as big as even five pounds I am seeing this year. It's pretty crazy. But most of them being within the pound to two pound range. That being said, there's not really one pond that's better than another. So I suggest going to the one that is closest to you. As far as tackle and gear for these fish, you really don't need anything special. Trout have very big eyes and very good eyesight. So it's best to go with lighter line. I personally prefer two to four pound tests to catch these fish. So for everyone watching, if you can do four to six pound tests, that is absolutely perfect for these trout. As for rod, I really like an ultralight rod, something really bendy. These fish don't put up a great fight unless you fight them on really light gear. So I prefer ultralight. Light is also fine. If you're really pushing it, you could use a medium. You're not gonna get much fight out of them though. Length is all personal preference. I have a little smaller rod that's about a five footer and then I have some seven footers to get out a little bit further from the bank. So whatever reel you prefer is fine, as long as you have enough line to cast out into the water. These fish aren't gonna give you any crazy runs or anything, they're not salmon. I personally like the Shimano Sienna, the smallest size they got, and the Fluger Presidential for my reels, personally. As a side note, most of this tackle can be found at your local Walmart, Sportsman's Warehouse, and I do believe we have a Bass Pro and a Cabela's here in Arizona. If all else fails, you can get 100% all of this on Amazon. Let me just start out by saying that there are so many different methods to catch these fish. You can keep it extremely basic if you want, or you can get a little advanced. We're going to be starting with the easiest rig here first that will probably catch you fish 90% of the time. Power bait. If you've trout fished before, you've probably seen this stuff. It ranges in a wide variety of colors and a bunch of different extra scents. It works just about anywhere in the world. For this simple rig, all you need is a small hook. My go-to size for a trout hook is size 8 or size 10. This could be a mosquito hook, a salmon egg hook, or even a bait holder hook. These hooks here will be just fine. This one is a little too big, so we're gonna get rid of that. All we're doing for this rig is tying a hook with whatever knot of your choice at the end of the line. I like a clinch knot. And we are simply attaching a split shot just above the hook. And this is just enough weight to get it casted out. Simply mold it around the hook, just like you would. Take it between your hands and roll it together like a pencil. That will keep it on the hook just fine. You'll be able to cast as far as you want and it even adds a little worm-like profile to your bait. This can just be casted out and set in a rod holder. 90% of the time, the fish are going to swallow this bait, so I do not recommend using it for catch and release. Another great alternative to power bait is the power egg. It's a much smaller presentation, and it usually works a little better on those pressured fish. I like to simply take the hook, pop it through, keeping the hook exposed, but also getting it a quarter of the way into the egg. That's going to sit just like that and float right up above the bottom. Another good alternative is the salmon egg. So this requires a downsize of hook sometimes because trout really don't like a bunch of bait balled up on the hook. They get smart very quickly to that type of stuff. Another effective way to catch these fish is a worm and bobber. And this is personally my favorite. Just add a clip bobber or a slip bobber but I like to simply thread my worm onto the hook halfway, poke the hook out and let the other half hang and dangle in the water. This will allow the worm to move around and when the trout sees it, they will swim by and hopefully pick up your bait. So my optimal rig is to have power bait on the bottom and then a bobber above. So I cover both depths of the water column. Now that we've gone over bait, let's go over some artificial methods to catch some of these stocked fish. First off is the inline spinner. You guys know rooster tails, meps, blue foxes, all your favorite. I personally use a local brand called Creek Freak Masturbates. They have done me pretty well so far. Everybody has their own opinion on colors. I think they all work great. I think there's a circumstance for all of them. However, my favorite are probably white, black, and chartreuse. All you need to do to work these are simply cast them out, wait a couple seconds so they can sink down there, and then simply slow retrieve. 
If that is not working, you can add a pop in there every now and then. If that's still not working, you can even increase your retrieve speed or decrease your retrieve speed. And if that's not working, they may just not be chasing that day. Another one that has worked almost the exact same way is these small Rapala crankbaits. However, the difference with the Rapalas is you can pop them like a jerk bait. You can use these with a slow retrieve, a fast retrieve, or even pop them like I just stated in the water column. The last artificial is definitely my favorite, and that is mini jigging. And it basically involves a small jig head tipped with a small soft plastic on the end. Today we are using space bugs. For this method, you simply take your soft plastic of choice, thread it on that small jig head. I prefer a 132nd ounce to a 164th ounce jig head. For this method, I like to cast out, let the jig sink, and then simply twitch your rod and slowly reel in. When I say slowly, I mean like a half a turn every five seconds. It's important to keep that bait in that water column and keep it in front of the fish's face. You can vary your retrieve by doing this faster or slower or twitching your rod more or less. Some of my favorite colors are pink, white, and black. These can also be worked under a bobber and this works really well on windy days. Simply take your bobber, put it above your jig. I like the easy trout float for this. Cast it out there and the waves themselves will move that bait enough under that float to where fish will come up and bite it. If it is a calm day, you can cast it out on a bobber, simply pull your bait towards yourself, let the bait fall down below the float again, wait a couple seconds, and repeat. Trout really like a falling action. The artificial bite for urban trout is not always there. There are days where they simply just will not chase anything and not eat any artificials. However, it's a good alternative for catch and release fishing and really fun if you do get on a hot bite. All right, we got all the info. Let's get down there for our first trip of the year. Me and P-Money are gonna be trying to catch some of these trout. It is urban pond trout time here in Arizona. Everybody's freaking out about it and we're keeping it very simple. We have our Shimano Sienna four pound test and a little short ugly stick rod, that's all you need. And then I only have a couple split shots for weight. And then I have a little glob of power bait. We're gonna get this out. Don't really need too much weight to cast. Like I said before, if you guys wanna make sure you catch these fish right when you get bit, Open your bale and let them eat it for like five to 10 seconds. Let them swallow it. If you're gonna keep them, 90% of the time they're gonna swallow it and you're gonna catch the fish. Right, Porter? Right. Nope. Nah, that ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them know. Oh, guys, 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 the bobber, the bobber, the bobber, guys. Fish on, fish on. And this is why we use the bobber right here. Oh, what is that? Is it a bass? No, it's a little trout. It's a little, oh my gosh, he jumped over the line. Look at this little feisty guy. And he's hooked in the top of the mouth, which is perfect for us. And because we're gonna let him go, you saw us uh, wet our hands. This was on the worm and bobber, little tiny guy, but he sunk the bobber. He sunk the bobber. And as long as you're gentle with them like that and letting him go, right by the water, not taking too many pictures, they will be just fine. If you take too long, fish just kind of flops around, gets covered in dirt and stuff. Probably 90% of them will not survive that. They're very fragile fish, so you need to be careful if you're gonna let them go. But with that being said, let's get another worm and blast it out there again. And then we'll change our power bait out here. Here we go, here's the setup. This is a longer rod so we can get it further and kind of drift with the wind. So the idea of this is we cover all the water where the fish could potentially be and eventually you will run into one. And we have just a little slip bobber, a couple split shots, and then a worm. And the way I have it rigged is we basically threaded the worm on there and then we poke the hook out. So we have a little size eight mosquito hook and we were right there-ish. Oh my god, the bobber guys, the bobber, got him, fish on, another on the bobber, oh he's jumping, he's, oh, he's jumping, he's jumping, guys the bobber is killing it today, we were just going to move this power bait here, and our bobber rod, he's small, they all kind of look a little pale in here, yeah I was going to say, yeah come on this side, no don't grab that line, we got a tuna on here guys, <laughs> Ah, uh, well, there's our second one, right in the top of the mouth. Keep our hands wet and take care of these because we're gonna let this guy go. Beautiful hook set right there. We'll get him out. Perfect. 
And guys, you could even just pop them off in the net and then just plop them right back so you don't even have to touch them. Wow, there we go. We're heating up here. We're heating up. All right, so we're not using this, guys, but this is another method, and it's floating a night crawler. So we basically put the needle, added some air, and then same setup, just a little weight and a long leader. And Porter's going to go catch his first trout. First trout of my life. <laughs> you just got to play around. That's your job as the fisherman, uh, is to find out what they're biting and where they're biting at. On the days you are out there, you have to be lucky enough for the trout to swim by your bait. A lot of the times, they will basically be doing a big circle of the pond. However, sometimes they just hold in one section of the pond and nobody catches them. There's been times where I am on the other side of the pond and I've seen people catch them all morning and I never got a bite. They are very, very random with the places they like to hold in and very random on what they like to bite. If you skunk out there a couple times, don't get discouraged. You just got unlucky that day. <laughs> Power bait. Power bait. Greased it. Greased it. Got him. Got him. You brought the luck. Look what you did. <laughs> We've been waiting. Oh, this is a better one. Better one, guys. Better one, guys. This one might have it swallowed. This is the biggest one of the day on the power bait here. Yeah. Did he swallow it? Is uh, the question? Unclear. <laughs> unclear. That is a nice one. Yeah. He That's did swallow it. We're going to keep this guy, probably eat him for breakfast. And there he is. That is our nicest of the day. Beautiful fish. And our third of the day. And the limit here is two fish, guys. Two fish. We need to honor that. No poaching. None of that. Just been rolling it on the hook. Not much. You don't need too much. Bad boy. All right, I'm gonna go whoosh, right out there. Go wherever. Oh, pecked. Quarters in my shot over here. Fish on on power bait. Fish on on power bait, guys. On le power bait, and he's pulling decent. I got the hook set pretty quick on this one, so I'm hoping he doesn't have it. I think my pants just ripped. I don't know. <laughs> this one's actually fighting not bad here. Ooh. Oh, I thought he popped. Look at how fast he's going. Look at how fast he is, guys. Ooh, not a bad one. Not a bad one. This is probably the same size as the other one. Or so. I think he's in the snoot. Let's wet the hands. We're keeping him in the water here. This almost looks like a steelhead. Beautiful fish. Dude, this looks like a steelhead. Look at this. I know, right? That's crazy. This is a, another nice one. And he's out of there. Perfect. That is two on power bait, two on worms. We're tied now. <laughs> Come on. Oh, bobber guys. Bobber guys getting pecked. Getting pecked. Got him. We got him on the bobber this one doesn't feel as big but i'm thinking another beautiful little trout and he's hooked right on the outside of the lip or not on the outside right in the lip this is why i like the bobbers as well it have it helps you hook these fish right and you're able to pop them off pretty easily thanks net boy i mean porter <laughs> <laughs> all the ones are really pale in here perfect hook set as you guys saw, that bobber was moving. We let him kind of eat it for a second. And then finally he took it under and boom, he was on. So beautiful little rainbow. Nothing really giant today, uh, but that's okay. They're all fun. There he goes. All right, we're gonna put another worm right on. It's kind of even right now. I will say we've gotten more bites on power bait, but we have landed almost every bite on worms. There we go, that's what we're doing. Nice and natural. Let's get this casted back out. All right, the sun is coming out more. We're anticipating the fish kind of just sinking down a little bit, but, oh, guys, we're already getting bit again. Already getting bit. Look at that, instantaneously. He's thinking about it. Got him, got him. 
two in a row, bro. <laughs> two in a row. Guys, I didn't even have a chance to restart the camera. <laughs> Worm and bobber. Another nice one. Another nice one. Same thing, we're just gonna pop this one off and get them on out of here. I don't like to keep, oh, popped off in the net, beauty. So in this case, we don't even have to put our hands on them and that's honestly what I prefer. So there we go, I'll show them in the net. This is a better one, for sure. And we'll get them right on out of there. Boom, didn't even have to touch them and he's good to go.